All right, folks, welcome back. Buckle up, because today I got a good one for you. We're going to be covering tulip wood, Dalbergia, out of Brazil. It's a true rosewood, not tulip wood like the big tulip trees that are like poplar. and They're from the magnolia family. We're not talking about those. Murado, monkey pod, and American chestnut. Yeah, American chestnut says an exotic. Stay tuned to see why. Let's dig right in. All right, on to the most expensive wood that I own, tulip wood. This is found exclusively in northern Brazil. Tulip wood is one of the rarest of the Dalbergia family, Dalbergia being the, the rosewood family. The trees don't get very big, so anything over five inches is going to be rare and constitute a premium as if the wood's not expensive enough as it is uh, the heartwood is a pinkish could be almost like a purplish tone and it'll have cream striping in it now let's take a look at this piece because that kind of accentuates what I'm saying the wood is very hard and dense and not unlike the other woods in the rosewood family. It has a natural high oil content. It's a very, very beautiful wood. It's very hard to source. Typical uses are pen blanks, small turnings, small crafting boxes, things like of that nature. But it's, uh, it, it hasn't been evaluated um, in the IUCN's red list, but it is on the site's appendix too under genus-wide restriction on all Dalbergia species, including things made from the wood. The one oddball effect with this wood is um, all the woods that I know of that are in the, the Dalbergia family, they are diffuse porous, where this is a semi-ring to ring porous wood. So I always found that a little bit odd. Its average dry weight is about five pounds of board foot. The Jenka hardness is uh, about 2,500, and the cost range is about 125 to 175 a board foot. And just so you can see, I usually take the tags off. Sometimes it'll be tags where if I'm selling the wood or it's tags where I bought it, but this, this is the price of this particular board. As you can see, it's three quarters of an inch. It's uh, 4.69 wide and 38 inches long. And the 4.69 is from here to here. Obviously, you see this board tapers all the way down to about three inches. And this board on its own was $145.60. These three boards together after taxes is close to 500. So you can see how expensive this particular wood is. It's beautiful and it's rare, but it's very expensive. Next one on the list is Murado, AKA Bolivian Rosewood. This wood is as close to a true rosewood as about any wood you can find outside the actual Dalbergia species. It's similar in density and hardness, but it's a touch on the softer end, just a little bit. The color spectrum of this is like a medium browns, uh, but it could have purple undertones to it. And then it'll have uh, dark chocolate to black striping going through it. Beautiful wood. This this is one of my personal favorites out of out of all the exotic species. I, I really like Murado. It's a beautiful wood. This wood is also a really good choice in the instrument field. The boards are said to have great musical tap tones. They're said to have light tight lows, present mids, and clear and singing high-end response. The average dry weight is about 4.5 pounds per board foot, and the Janka is about 1860. The cost range for this is about 40 to 50 dollars a board foot. 
and it's a diffused porous wood. The next wood we're looking at is monkey pod. You can find this in Mexico, Peru, Brazil, Bolivia, though it also grows in Hawaii and even in Florida from what I hear. It's a central and South American tree that has also been naturalized in other parts of the world with tropical climates. They're big trees. They get to about 120 feet tall. Coloring is like a golden brown with some chocolate streaking and swirls. It's not unusual to find monkey pod with curly and heavy figure to it. Those are the ones that are most sought after. Wide and extra wide boards, they're going to be available. So doing coffee, dining, or conference tables with a single slab, you can do it. It's diffused porous. It's got good rot resistance from what I hear. And uh, a natural resistance to, mo to most insect species for insect damage. It's very easy to work with. It's a softer wood. Like African mahogany, it, it kind of reminds me of mostly with the milling process where if you've ever milled African mahogany, it can leave like a... Let me see if I could pull you in because these boards all have it. It'll have uh, like fuzzy patches. Let's see if we could get in there and see any of them. The way it's typically dealt with is, is through just sanding when you're done with your milling and going through the process. You see some of those streaks running through? If you feel it, you know, even though the board's flat, it'll still have the, the fuzziness to it. You know, it's just natural. And it's obviously not the only wood that does it. Its average dry weight is about 3.4 pounds per board foot. Uh, the Janka is 910. So it's, you know, obviously a softer timber. And the cost range is about $12 to $16 a board foot. Though highly figured slabs are going to probably be more around the $20 to $35 a board foot range. Last but not least, American Chestnut. Now, you're probably thinking, Chris, you're doing exotics. Why do you have American Chestnut? Well... This, the chestnut tree in the early 20th century got blasted by the chestnut blight and it wiped out close to all mature trees. Saplings, even to this day, through the root system, still underground, it'll fire up suckers and they'll, you'll start having saplings and once they get to the four to eight year range, they'll fall victim to the blight again and the process just continues so that's why you know they're not they're not prelevant anymore you, re you really don't hardly ever see them and i live in the area where they were most prevalent so everything that you see now is reclaimed hence the holes that you can see in these boards right here chestnut has a similar appearance to oak the color in the grain but it's got subtle distinctions mostly the smell and the end grain. Now I like oak. It's got a lot of good uses, good wood, but when it's going through the milling process or if you do tree work then you'll you'll know much easier while the wood's green, but when you're cutting through it it kind of tends to have like a puke smell to it. Where chestnut has almost no smell at all. And then the other part of it is in the end grain. The red and white oak, they have perpendicular divisions across horizontal porous bands where chestnut does not so that's another way that that you can tell the difference between chestnut and oak average dry weight is 2.6 pounds a board foot the janka hardness is, is what i'm finding is 550 i'm gonna have to run these tests on my own because i i really think it's harder than 550 and the cost per board foot if you can find it reclaimed wood it's going to be 12 to 25 dollars a board foot and if you're wondering about the chestnuts i just wanted to bring this up the chestnuts that we find now they're from the european and asian chestnut species but as far as lumber goes the usa has not 
you know, sold it for decades now. The, the harvesting ended during the blight. So whatever was sold up decades ago is what it was. All right, I hope this was a fun and informative one for you guys. Um, and I hope you got a lot out of it. If you did, do me that solid, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, share, you know the drill. And don't forget to check out the other Arboretum series.